Okay guys, so I got another drone build video here for you guys today on a, on a 5 inch and the goal of this video is to create the most inexpensive 5 inch cinematic drone and I'm going to be stabilizing all my footage from the GoPro using Real Steady Go and um, basically this is the Tyra 109 and I haven't put the frame here, just the electronics because I already, I already built the Tyro 99 a while back and the frame looks almost the same as this. And the major difference between the Tyro 99 and the Tyro 109, which is what we're building today, is um, the motors. And so these motors are upgraded on the Tyro 109. These are 2206, 2400 kV, so a little bit more kV. It's going to help uh, carrying that GoPro around. And then you have a different video transmitter here on the Tyro 109. So basically, you know, for a drone build, you need a frame. So I'm going to be using this frame instead so you can carry a GoPro. The uh, This style frame is not very good for carrying a GoPro. You can do it, but uh, it's not, not that ideal. This one I'm going to have a top mounted battery. have the GoPro here with a strap here. And as I said, I'm going to stabilize all the footage. And this is uh, probably the cheapest frame, 5 inch frame that I could find on Bank. It's like $21 I believe. Uh, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Check the link for the latest price. but. This is okay. I mean, the goal of this is not to create the uh, fastest or the most durable or the uh, best possible 5 inch drone. The, the, the goal of this is to create the most or the least inexpensive drone and get the best stabilized footage from your GoPro. And you don't really need much because basically Real Steady Go is doing all the hard work and uh, basically taking all the little jitters out of your video footage and making it nice and smooth and cinematic looking. Now, I already did a video again, as I said, on the Tyro 99. I'll link that down below um, if you want more details on how all the little parts go together, but it's really plug and play. I'll just go over really quickly in case you don't want to watch that video. You get these wires here. So this is a wire here for the receiver. It plugs in right there. That's the USB port right there. This is the 4-in-1 EC loom wire here. It plugs in on this side over here. And the other side goes to your 400 EC right there. Then you get another plug for your video transmitter. And you really can't mess it up. The plugs are all wired up correctly. Just plug it in over here. This is the opposite of the USB port. That's the VTX port. And then over here is the camera port. There's the camera. And the camera just plugs in right there. So basically the rest of it is soldering. And it's not a whole lot. So got your XC60. The capacitor is already soldered on here and we're just going to, I don't know which way I'm going to put it, the, way, the top or the bottom, but basically you stick it in like that and you can solder from the other side. That's pretty easy. That's going to be pretty simple. And then you just need to solder the motor wires to the foreign EC. So the EC is going to be, it's going to be like this. So this is going to be motor 1, these three tabs, this is motor 2, 3, and 4, so then like one of these motors this is going to basically... The easiest way to do it is either like this, take your motor wire and stick it through the hole on one side and then solder it on the other side. That's probably what I'm going to do. There's three wires for each motor. So that's it. So that's 3, 12, plus 2 more for the XT60. That's 14 solder joints. Everything else is plug and play. So these Tyro builds are fairly straightforward. Um, so I'm just going to put all the parts into the frame and I'll show you what it looks like, what it weighs, and then we'll uh, go and take it for a fly.
Okay, so one little bit of a wrinkle I've discovered here with the frame that I got for this project is that it is designed for a micro camera and the adapter that is on um, the camera that comes pre-built with the Tyro 109 kit is a full size or 28 millimeter camera so you can either make an adapter like I did here or you can use a different like uh, micro 14 millimeter to 19 millimeter adapter and use the uh, included side plates uh, which I'm not using so there's different, some different ways you could get the uh, included camera to work or if you just want to use the adapter as is you could go to a totally different frame like this one here is the uh, TBS Source 1 you can pick this up at Race Day Quads it's about five dollars more but this one has the uh, correct full-size camera size 20 millimeters and uh, you should be able to fit the camera into this particular frame. So I'll link that down in the description. Okay, so I'm just flying it here on the default factory PID tune that came on the flight controller. I didn't change any of the settings and I'm actually, well, what I'm trying to do is fly kind of like what a um, beginner might fly like a little bit sort of uh, with um, the default rates and maybe not as smooth as possible so you're kind of seeing here what the uh, benefits of Real Steady Go are. You could take really uh, sort of mediocre footage not flown particularly well by any particular pilot and really inexpensive hardware uh, basic equipment and get some pretty smooth video uh, once it's been processed by Real Steady Go, so that's basically the whole, you know, uh, purpose and concept of this video is to show that you don't have to spend a lot of money on the actual drone equipment or even have uh, exceptional flying skills. You can still get some pretty decent footage uh, with your GoPro and Real Steady Go. So hopefully you guys found this uh, useful and helpful. And uh, yeah, if you're look, thinking about getting into cinematic drone footage with your 5 inch, this is definitely the most economical, most inexpensive way that i found to uh, get a 5 inch drone and some, get some good footage from your GoPro. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.